Hello everyone, welcome to the anubavtrainings.com. Today's episode we will talk about new ABAP syntax with NetWeaver 7.4 onwards called corresponding hash. It's a very very powerful syntax in ABAP language. As you all know ABAP is also moving to cloud where now you can build ABAP applications as a side by side extensions to S4 or as a completely new greenfield applications using restful about programming knowledge. Now this type of syntax is very often used in restful about to be able to move data from one table to another internal table. So let's go ahead and see a practical example. Before we move on if this session is helping you please feel free to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so that you get notified with the next video on anubavtrainings.com. So let's switch to the system. I have connected to our ABAP on cloud system to showcase you an example and we are already in a wrap package. We will go ahead and create a new class and let me give the class name as ZRAP underscore demo new syntax. All right. This is my first class in ABAP on Cloud. If you want to know more about ABAP on Cloud, please click on the I button, which will guide you through the first video of ABAP on Cloud. Click on the next button, and this will create our class in ABAP on Cloud system. So basically, idea is to understand the new ABAP syntax with corresponding hash. So that's our main goal here, not to probably understand the RESTful application programming. Those who want to know RESTful application programming, you can also go ahead and subscribe my ABAP on Cloud course. Now here, we will just go ahead and set up a public interface first of all. Because in ABAP on Cloud, you don't have an opportunity to run a classical ABAP program type of object. You have to rely on this class with the interface and I'll quickly generate the main method. So let's implement the method and now in this we will be adding multiple methods. So let me add one method called fill my internal table. So I'll just prepare an internal table with some demo data. I, I will say fill table and then I will also create uh, another method say print table and then I will say learn corresponding. So these are all the three methods we are adding. You can click again and just say add these three implementations quickly. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and create here in the public section new data types. So we will be creating first the data types. Begin of py underscore let's say sales data. You can have some demo sales data for example and this includes uh, three important fields customer type uh, C length 80 characters then you have amount type in for and then you have also the country type land one it's a standard data type out there and then end of type sales let's also declare a table type for the sales Just some sample demo data we are preparing for understanding the concepts of corresponding hash and now let me declare some data types so I'll just create a table called um, their tab sales type uh, TD sales and then another table called table sales 2 type TD underscore sales really cool just save this up and now what we do is we will just fill this tab sales with uh, some demo data and just quickly go ahead and print this data on the UI. That's what we'll be doing. So I will be filling it about with the, let's say five to six records in it. And then we'll see what else we can do to this data to move to another table. So that's what we want to do. Ultimately, we want to move data from one table to another. So that's what we want to learn here in this. If you want to download the source code, you can do it with the description of this video. You can just go to the description and click on the link down there to download this complete source code in your own system. All right. 
let's go back now and we'll just fill the table so we will be filling with the demo data so i can say me tab sales and just fill it with value expression so this is something another interesting concept in a app with the value expression and i'll just create records say customer and i'll say ibm amount eight eight thousand and let's say uh, country as india and now we will be repeating this record multiple times just do that come here and increase the number of records awesome and just say 2500 us and say 1800 us Apla 4700 DE Tapla 7400 US Sony 5500 India Sony 3500 US and now we'll just go ahead and add in another entry for Tapla with value as 12 1500 as D awesome so that's my data set let's print this data set right onto the UI in the console and to do that we're going to use this one and just go to the print table as usual we can just do that with an out function and it's also quite important that I will call this in the mean function these methods which we just added so me fill table that's the first function call second one is going to be learn corresponding right now there's no implementation out there and then we will just say print data of both the tables and in this print data we will also be passing the output parameter what we also have for this uh, mean function typically get it out of the box so for that i have to just copy this interface name and search for this interface in the system and just find out what's the output parameter type which is a type ref to o class run out we are just going to plug that over here for print table and this output parameter i will also be passing here okay exporting and let's try it here and you can just map the output parameter so now this can print the results on the ui and we just say display data and let me pass our sales table superb so now we have got fill the data in our table and we are going to print that before we also do that i'm just going to also give a name here my and then we will also print our table copy the one which we another one which we created sales 2 and let's say copied sales table so of course uh, the table 2 is not yet filled it's going to show blank and the first table is going to show you this um this about eight records out here we will see that let's activate and we can just also open the console down there in eclipse and we can switch to the option for console where it is gone i think it's not here let's give it a try just going to say f9 it runs and yes there you go that's your console and it's printing the results so you can see original sales table we have got about eight records keep back getting printed here and then we have copied sales table is currently empty now what do you typically do to to move the data from one table to another table in classical abap in classical abap uh, to do that, what we do, let's fill in this learn, learn corresponding. So what do you do in classical ABAP? Uh, you will just loop at first table into a work area, and then you do move corresponding this work area to new work area, and then you append this new work area to another table. That's your classical ABAP way of looping and moving the data it's a dirty approach 
It's an old approach. Of course, this still works in the system, but we are not here to learn that. We want to learn the new syntax. And the guess, guess what? This whole thing which you are writing here, four lines of code, can be written in a single line. Watch out. Just say me, and I'll say sales2 equals to corresponding hashtag, and then we just add here my current sales table. Awesome. Fantastic. Let's save this up, and I'm going to activate and watch out the result, just clear the console here, right click and clear the console before it prints, and now watch out, I just press F9, and there you go, the magic happens on the UI. You see both the data got copied from one place to another. That's really cool, yeah? But uh, now let's see some interesting facts about it. The first important thing, how it moves the data is based on the comparison of the column names, All right? Now, just in case, imagine there is another table where the column names are not matching. What do you do in such cases? Let me show you here. I will go back and change the structure a little. We will just go and define another structure. But this time, what I will simply do is just keep make sure uh, the names uh, names of my columns are not matching. Okay, just do everything. This also too. Yeah. All right. So. Just put a comma, yeah. So now everything is two. You see this two, this two, this two, and here also it's two. And now I will change this customer to let's say, um, let's say party or ship to party. Or ship party or sold party. And there's the amount is I'll say gross. And the country I will say place. So now, of course, the move corresponding or the corresponding hash would probably not work. Let's give it a try now. So what I'll do is I go back, clear the console, because now the property names are different, and I just press F9 on the on the execution to just execute our result. And you see the copied sales data is now empty because it could not find the corresponding fields in the target table. Don't worry, corresponding hash will also manage that pretty well. So you can just go back out here. And while doing your corresponding hashtag, you can also just give the mapping. So you can tell manually to the system that I would like to map my data from source to target in a different way. I don't want to rely you uh, rely you on uh, on the default behavior, which completely relies on the on the on the name matching. I don't want to do that. I would like to do the mapping myself. So that's what you can do. Show to party, takes the data from customer. And then we have the gross amount, takes the data from amount field. And then the place field takes the data from uh, the country. And now watch out. I just activate this. And I just go back out here. Where is it? Okay, yeah, it's here only. So it's a console. I'm going to just right click and clear. And now let's run this one more time. Press F9. And there you go. This time data moved properly without even again looping with the help of corresponding hash. That's the beauty of corresponding hash. The new ABAP syntax, very, very handy and helpful when you're working with ABAP. That's not all. It has a lot more extra capabilities. So if I just add here an additional uh, additional statement, that's basically to avoid duplicates. So I can also say I don't want to store uh, the values of uh, duplicate customers again and again. So what you can do is you can also use another variation called discarding duplicate, and then uh, you can do the mapping based on what you want to compare. So I will say here mapping. Before mapping, I can just say discarding duplicates. Yeah, so discarding duplicates, uh, and I'll just save this. Now watch out, just activate. So now let's go and check the result. So as you can see, first it's printing the original sales table, and then let's go and check. Uh, yeah, so the copy data now you can see it has got only the unique values out here with regard to the compared customer. So this is how the corresponding hash is very, very helpful with respect to new ABAP syntax. Many a times you can use this to avoid complex looping and conditional processing, which is a, always an overhead on the system. Yeah. So if you think this video is helping you, please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your colleagues so that that will also help them to understand 
the new corresponding hash above syntax. With that, Anubhav signing out. Thank you so much and see you in the next session.